The Mardi Gras Unmasked exhibit is our celebration of Mardi Gras this year here at the Bryan Museum. This is our fourth year and we're just so excited to celebrate along with the island. This year's exhibit is really exceptional because we have 28 unique masks that are made by all different artists and on loan from different individuals in the community. The masks here on display represent creations all the way from 1928 through two months ago when one was recently made just for us to have on exhibit. So the historical significance of the Mardi Gras mask, we touch on the great old historical significance, which would be all the way from the 15th century in Venice. The more recent uh, Mardi Gras in the US, and especially in Galveston, which has the second biggest Mardi Gras celebration in Texas. We were inspired to have the Mardi Gras Unmasked exhibit because we want to do an exhibit each year that highlights a different aspect of Mardi Gras. And on the island, we see masks every once in a while, but I have never seen a group of them together, and they're so ornate and whimsical. I thought it would be really fun to showcase an array of them all in one place. Two of our historical masks in this exhibit that I want to highlight are this red satin mask here. It dates to 1928. It has lace on the outside and uh, beads sewn onto it. It was from the Venetian court that year. Over here we have a mask that was clearly homemade. It has uh, pipe cleaners as the pillars and decorative pieces and bright sparkly glitter on it. It is a mask that George P. Mitchell wore in 1986 right after they put up the arches that were custom designed by architects from all over the country that were placed on the island for Mardi Gras that year. This mask by Eric Adia is my favorite out of the exhibit. It is, of course, larger than life. Eric Adia is out of New Jersey, and he researched Galveston Island when he loaned us these masks. And so this mask is actually inspired by a statue that was stolen from outside of Bishop's Palace on the island and then anonymously returned two years later. He actually hand sculpted this face mask and then of course painted it. He's a full-time biologist who works in a hospital and so he took two days off work just to hand make this um, over a week for us. So it's a really special piece and you can see it's just, it's made for the stage. This is really phenomenal. What's really special about what we have on display is it's really stood the test of time, or it was so well made and treasured that somebody saved it and either donated it to a museum or kept it in their family. Um, this mask over here is on loan from Sean Porch, who's a local um, Galvestonian, and these masks were not intended to go together. So it was really fun that they really complement each other. This one is a little bit older and is on loan from the Galveston County Museum. I called this the Spanish Bride mask, but I just love the veil and the comb. It's really fun. We have handpicked these masks to really be on display and showcase artistry. This one down here is hand-tooled leather, and this one up here by Judith Rauchfuss has custom-painted marbled paper for the wings. She does this wire work, uses bells. It's just very handcrafted and whimsical artistry. Part of what I really love about uh, helping create the Mardi Gras exhibit each year is that we are looking for that local audience because we think it's so important for Galveston Island to celebrate their own. But then by celebrating and showing some of these other artisans from around the country, we also make it a little more intriguing for the average visitor who just wants to come in and see something really special that's Mardi Gras themed. 